Hey folks, welcome back. Don't you just love it when your camera goes out on you right in the middle of the most important part? Don't worry, you didn't miss much. Um, I was just cleaning out more of the sound hole, getting all the fuzzies out, um, and then I got my stopper glued in with this pine pitch glue. So that's just basically a hot melt glue made from pine sap. Anyway, here's the notes I got so far. You can see that all right. Got our ramp glued in. Now it's time to do our hole spacing. This is a four hole whistle, so I'm gonna need to lie out these holes and uh, get them drilled in. Now, you can look up hole spacing on Blue Bear Flute's website. Check out uh, Blue Bear Flute's YouTube channel. Charlie Mato Toyella is a wonderful, wonderful person and uh, really talented flute maker makes it look so easy um, but with my experience and knowledge working stone tools this is something I've always wanted to do and hopefully in later projects uh, we can go out and harvest some cane make the stone tools on site and turn out a flute in a day from totally organic materials anyway hole spacing that I'm gonna use that I've figured out for myself is just basically from the back edge of the sound hole, I'm sorry, from the cutting edge of the sound hole, about three tight fingers. I, I just pull them tight, go ahead, come down here, set my spur on there, and I'm just gonna make a mark. I'm not gonna drill them yet. Okay, and then from that, I'm gonna go about a pinky's width between Put right there and the whole spacing isn't I mean it is important but it doesn't have to be like spot on exact because as you widen these holes you'll kind of widen them in one direction or another and I don't know it just kind of just kind of works out and then, okay so I've got one, two, my third hole was an index finger away. Now I'm back to a pinky. About right there. And then I've already cut this to length. Hopefully it's not too short, but I've got about two fingers from the last hole down here. So I'm gonna just make sure those holes are lined up pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drill them in. These stone tools are actually really fascinating to work with and it slows you down a lot, but as far as the, the detail that they can do, I mean, they're amazing tools. Okay, I'm just gonna get, get through. I'm just gonna start with a small hole and then we'll widen them as we go to do the final tuning but I'm gonna go ahead and get through all of these get air passing through them hope that's still in focus for you
that tool. Hold on one second. Got to get a piece of antler. Oh, got some here. work a new tip on that. Okay, we've got four holes. They're not super clean, nor are they wide enough. But let's see what we get. All right, we're getting notes. Sounds pretty uh, well in tune. I just need to widen these out a little bit. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna trim down this tool because I don't want to widen the outside. I just want to get on the very inside. I just need to thin my spur a little bit. Do that properly. I need a little leather here to hold. And this is a much more blunt piece of antler, but you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just chipping, napping away this edge. Basically just making the spur skinnier again so I can get it down inside that hole and clean out the inside. Ah, that's napping for you. Um, shoot, let's take this little guy here. And I'm just gonna trim this away. Watch your eyes when you do this, kids. I have a tendency to, when I'm doing serious napping, I'm always wearing eyewear, but Every flake I take, I kind of close my eyes. Okay, there's a nice little, nice little tool. 